When I first set out to make this video, I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking for, but I wanted to know, out of all of these animation masters, these masters of industry over in Japan, what was making them tick? What do they all have in common that made them so successful? And what lessons can we learn from their journeys? What I was originally looking for was examples like Kohi Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia, and he said that he cannot draw Midoriya's hair correctly every time, teaching us that even if you're a highly regarded artist, even if it's your own anime character, it can still be a struggle with consistency in your art. The creator of the One Punch Man webcomic, who goes by the pseudonym One, showed us that you don't have to be an incredible artist to tell a good story. Even with One's subpar art style, the webcomic still became a wildly successful manga, even before it was adapted by Yusuke Murata. So I set out to look at different interviews and quotes from the best animation directors and manga artists in the entire world, looking for other examples like this, lessons we could learn. What I found out was a commonality that was actually quite surprising, and that's that they're actually quite troubled individuals. Heyo Miyazaki, one of the most celebrated animation directors in history, co-founder of Studio Ghibli, has had some tremendously inspirational quotes which play on this idea of torment in the human soul. One of the things he said is, the creation of a single world comes from a huge number of fragments and chaos. The greatness of a mind is determined by the depth of its suffering. Creating animation means creating a fictional world. That world soothes the spirit of those who are disheartened and exhausted from dealing with the sharp edges of reality. I tried to dig deep into the well of my subconscious. At a certain moment in that process, the lid is opened and very different ideas and visions are liberated. With those, I can start making a film. The villains are all parts of me. For years, I've been wondering what it would be like if all of those negative elements were forced onto the main character's side. I can understand a character with that kind of anger. And what Miyazaki is saying is that he pulls inspiration from the darkness within his own mind. People who have struggled and suffered throughout their life are inherently going to be far stronger and far more ambitious and potentially even creative than those who have had an easy life. And I think for the listeners here, if you hear that, if your life is difficult, remember that that will shape you into a much stronger person than anyone else moving forward in the future. Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, is actually a quite interesting story. He considers himself a lazy bum and a country boy with no desire for fame, yet his Dragon Ball franchise has impacted the entire world on an incomparable level. In his early days, he spent most of his time at cafes and he would chain smoke. He ran out of money and he started participating in comic contests just so he could get money for more cigarettes. He hated his job and he'd always show up late to work. But in the end, he became one of the most successful anime creators of all time. And I think the lesson that you can learn from Akira Toriyama is never to underestimate people. The people you look at and you say, oh, they're lazy, oh, they will never turn out to be anything, may have the potential deep within them to be wildly successful beyond your imagination. The creator of Evangelion, Hideaki Anno, said that I think people who are too involved with the internet have very narrow views towards life and the world. They're always in their rooms and don't go out very often to communicate in person. Because of their information on the internet, they feel they know everything without searching the real truths. They easily and anonymously say things that they would never say in person. Their messages are like graffiti in a public toilet. Is he talking about Twitter? They attack others while staying in a safe place. They don't have anything certain to hold on to, and that's probably why they watch anime shows. This one hit home for me specifically because, especially on Twitter and on the internet, somebody can say something about you and everybody just believes it without searching the real truth. What's actually going on behind the scenes? People are very quick to make judgments. And personally, as I've gotten older, this is why I've learned to always keep an open mind 
and essentially believe nothing of what I hear and only half of what I see. And this is because as you get older, as you have lots of life experiences, it culminates into this understanding that looks and words can be very deceiving. People take things out of context. People will try and make you look like a bad person. There's a lot of character assassination. And it's really interesting to me why Hideaki Anno is talking about this. Someone who has created a series that is held in such high regard. Why is he still facing this kind of treatment? Why is he tormented by this kind of internet bullying? Why is he even getting bullied obnoxiously in the first place? You would think that someone who is that successful would just ignore all of these accusations coming from people on the internet. But in the end of the day, I think what's important to the creators of these incredible series is respect. And they feel like in the end of the day, they're getting disrespected. And I can totally understand that. The creator of Akira, Katsuhiro Otomo, said that when he saw the first rush of the movie for Akira, he thought it would be a failure. He left the theater very quickly to come home and tell his wife that the movie was a failure. Akira went on to be one of the most established, critically acclaimed animated movies of all time. I think that sometimes creators don't even see the beauty in what they've created. They don't realize the impact that it will have on the audience that is viewing it. His quote, I didn't make it with a foreign audience in mind. To be honest, I haven't made anything intentionally directed towards a foreign audience. But I was certainly surprised when I recently went to the Academy Awards and received a standing ovation. I would have stood and cheered and clapped for him. Akira was one of the first anime movies I had ever seen and I remember being completely mesmerized by what I was watching. And could you have imagined if that movie was a failure? The impact it had on the anime industry as a whole is undeniable and the fact that he thought it would be a failure is actually quite ironic. Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomino said that before Gundam, he was a storyboard artist on a variety of series. He was doing this to increase his skills before he started Gundam. He said if you're not involved in a wide variety of work, your focus gets narrower. If you're not studying various types of works, and if you don't learn different types of dramatization, then you will only make limited work. To me what this means is, in order to create fresh concepts, it comes from the study of a variety of success in that industry. And then taking what you've learned and apply your own concepts and ideas, pulling from your torment inside of you and your suffering and applying that to that movie as we learned from some of these other anime directors. That's how you create something beautiful, different, and a masterpiece. The last creator that I want to talk about is the creator of Berserk, Kentaro Miura. Berserk is arguably the best manga of all time, and it's certainly my favorite manga of all time. Now, I was expecting Miura to have a very dark and twisted mentality and mindset. If you know Berserk, if you've read the manga, it is incredibly, incredibly dark. But as I was listening to his interviews and reading his quotes, it turns out that he has such a fantastic mentality. He speaks about dreams, about the future and the past. He says, if you're always worried about crushing the ants beneath you, you won't be able to walk. And what he means by that is haters and criticizers. If you're constantly worrying about them, it's gonna prevent you from moving forward. You're gonna stay stagnant, you won't grow. It's imperative that you focus on your dream and moving forward and not just trying to make everyone happy and satisfy the people that are trying to bring you down. He also says that living for the future is more important than trying to avenge the past. Again, another quote about pursuing your dreams and moving forward and growing. Keep your eyes on the prize. All of us as human beings have various experiences in our past that we think about, we're damaged because of it, we have baggage, and it can weigh us down. But if you wanna be successful, if you wanna grow and move forward, you have to keep your eyes on the prize and look forward to the future and bringing your dream into a reality. Which leads into the final quote, each man longs to pursue his dream. Each man is tortured by this dream, but the dream gives meaning to his life. Even if the dream ruins his life, man cannot allow himself to leave it behind. In this world, is man ever able to possess anything more solid than a dream? Why this is so important and so powerful is that every man is chasing after something 
that he needs to attain in order to achieve fulfillment in his life. It's both an incredibly motivating factor, but it tortures you as you know that in that state that you're currently in, you have not yet achieved that dream. You have not yet gained the fulfillment that you have been looking for. And sometimes your dream can almost be unreachable, unattainable. And in chasing after your dream, you have to make sacrifices along the way. You'll have to put your friends and your family in the back seat. You'll ruin relationships. You'll devote your life to this dream that you're chasing after, so much so that it can even be self-destructive. But you can't ever give up on that dream, even if it does destroy your relationships. It's something tangible that only you have and nobody else can touch. Without that dream, you'll be a lifeless shell, unmotivated, unproductive, and simply letting life wash by uncontent and unhappy. My dream is to have my own animated series. Right now, I'm working hard on my own series called Demon Rush. It's something that's gonna require an incredible amount of time, energy, and money. But my dream is to either have my show on TV or to be able to walk down a red carpet premiere of my own movie. That is my dream, and I know that I will never rest until I make that dream a reality. It's what motivates me, it's what keeps me creative, and it's the light that shines during all the dark times in my life and all the pressure and all the strain that I'm going through. I can push past all of it because I have that dream in the foreground, something that I can see, something that I can almost touch, and I won't rest until I have it. All of these mega highly regarded anime directors and artists have something in common, and that's that their life isn't perfect. They've all endured tremendous suffering and pain in order to achieve their dreams, but they've achieved them. They've taken their struggles throughout their life and their career, and they've taken those messages that they've learned, and they've incorporated it into their own story. These stories that they've created are parts and pieces of themselves. And what I've learned from these masters of the industry is that through great pain comes an incredible amount of resilience, drive, and creativity. I'm Star. thanks so much for stopping by to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up and comment down below, and I'll be seeing you soon with some more videos.